Hi, I'm Melinda Weaver, your dog trainer, and I'm ready to get started helping you train your puppy. Um, we are going to uh, share screens here and I will get us started. So this is all about puppies. Um, everything you need to know about the training and things that you'll be doing to teach your puppy to be a great adult dog in the future. So let's get started. First, how dogs learn. They are constantly learning. Um, they learn in two ways, by association, which we call classical conditioning as our technical term, which is basically by emotional response. Um, so an example, they basically, anytime they encounter something, they come away with an emotion of that's good for me, bad for me, or they're just neutral about it. I, it doesn't really matter either way. So one example is the food bowl. They come to know that the food bowl that ceramic bowl or metal bowl that you have or plastic means they're gonna get a meal. And so they start to see when the food bowl comes out, they are super excited about it um, because they've associated it with good things. Um, the other way they learn is by consequence, which we call operant conditioning or by actions. So they do something and then something happens in return. Um, and so basically like with classical conditioning, I mean with operant conditioning, let's say they jump up and they get attention. So they learn, oh, I jump up and I, in order to get attention. Or if they sit down, they get attention. Then they learn, I need to sit to get attention. So basically with the association, they're learning, they're deciding if something is safe, if it's dangerous, or if it's neutral. So basically every interaction your puppy has is gonna teach him something. Um, we want to prevent the bad interactions and create really good interactions in order to have great adult dogs who enjoy meeting new people, experiencing new things, hearing all sorts of sounds, um, so that they don't become fearful of things, which can turn into aggression and other behavior problems. So the learning by consequence. This is where we come in with our clickers and treats. So the consequence has to be immediate in order for the dog to understand that what they did got that consequence to happen. So that's why we're gonna use a clicker in order to teach them these things for the training specific behaviors. It gives us better communication and we'll go over in a separate um, presentation exactly all the details about clicker training when I come over. So short recap. Association, they learn by association, which is emotion, or by consequence, which is doing or their actions. So basically they see the world in two ways, basically what's safe or dangerous for them and what works or doesn't work. They don't think in right or wrong. They just think, I chewed on this, it felt good. So I'm gonna chew on this again. It doesn't matter if it's a shoe or a bone or one of their toys. Um, so we have to teach them the things that they can and cannot do. So in pre preparation for your first uh, group class or for your first um, private training session, whichever one you're doing, we are going to practice a little bit of the clicker training first so you can get to understand this um, and basically just get comfortable with um, clicking and handing your treats. So the click means the dog has done what you want and he's won a reward for it. So we do this by clicking and then handing the treat. Um, and if you don't have a clicker, that's okay. You can even just use a pin and just practice um, that motion of click, hand the treat. So I will also use a pin and I will provide the clicker for you um, on our first session. So if you don't have one yet, don't worry. Um, and every time we click, we always give a treat, even if we accidentally click to the wrong time. So we always be first, we always are sure first to click then deliver our treat. Um, I'm using some just dried beans right now for my pretend treats. Um, and so you can use that or any other small object to kind of practice your um, motion and your mechanics of this. So first you wanna just practice by clicking, deliver the treat. Click, deliver the treat. And you can practice with both hands, um, with either or, so that you can practice, okay, does it feel more comfortable to click with my right hand? and then deliver with my left or the other way around. Um, and so kind of like just practice that motion a couple times um, so that you could kind of get that 
uh, going. You want to be sure to hold your hands still. Usually, I want to show you when I'm standing up, um, I try and hold my hands in one spot, um, even like my treat hand, maybe behind my back. Click, and then I go and deliver that treat. Um, and so that way, you make sure that the dog is focusing on the sound um, of the click and that they hear that sound. Then we deliver that treat. Um, because if you're handing them the treat while you're clicking, then they'll just be focused on food is coming my way. And we want them to be focused on what they're doing in order to get that reward. So hold your hands in a certain spot. I usually hold them right at my belly button or behind my back even. And so I click and then deliver my treat. All right, so we're gonna do some practicing now. Um, we're gonna watch the video and um, I'm gonna mute the sound. Uh, this is my dog, Comet. Um, and he's gonna be doing some behaviors. And basically, um, I, the first time we watch this, I want you to just click every time he sits. This is gonna help you to kind of get your timing down right, because we want to click as soon as the dog does what we want. All right. So every time he sits, we will click. Click, hand the treat. Click. Toss a treat. Sometimes we'll toss it, sometimes we'll just give it to the dog. Click, treat. Click, treat. Click, treat. Click, treat. All right. So he moves really fast, that's why it's really uh, fun to work with him and train him, um, but you gotta have your mechanics down really well um, for his training. So I'm gonna play it again, and go ahead this time and click every time he does a down. So click. Give our treat. Click. And if you click at the wrong time, click, treat, then go ahead and give the treat. Because you always want the click to mean they're getting a reward. Click, treat. Click, treat. All right. So that's just a little bit of practice for y'all to get your mechanics down a bit better. Okay, so. With puppies, bite inhibition is something we have to train our puppies, which basically means teaching them how strong their jaw is um, and how much pressure or how little pressure to put when they're gnawing on us. Um, so first step is to rule out all the painful bites. So anytime that your puppy, um, that it hurts, um, you basically want to remove attention from them. So removing your hands, looking away. If you have to stand up to get out of the way, um, basically, they learn if it hurts, I, I don't get attention anymore. I don't get to play. Um, and then after a few seconds or a few minutes, um, you can re-engage with your puppy and play with them again. Um, also, if they're just being super mouthy because they explore the world with their mouths, it's going to happen. Also, when they're teething, it's going to hurt. So they're wanting to chew on things. Um, just if they're really chewing on you a lot, grab a toy, put that in their mouth instead. And they learn, okay, I can chew on this. I can't chew on a hand. Um, once they learn this, being consistent is key. Uh, you want everybody in the house to do the same things. Um, finally, once they um, kind of learn this, they'll, they'll start to learn that, oh, okay, I can chew on these toys, but I can't chew on this other object. Um, for kids, I would say that no biting at all is allowed um, so that the dog learns that, you know, I'm not allowed to chew on little people. Um, and basically, um, so the adults in the house can teach the dog how strong their bite is. Um, the importance of this is that if they get older and they've not learned how hard their bite is um, or how to control that, then if for one weird reason they lash out at some point um, and they do end up biting someone, um, most dogs are able to con can control their bite so that if they just bit down real carefully and let go, then they don't even make a mark hardly. Um, but if they don't learn, they can bite really hard without even knowing it. 
Um, so that's why as the adults in the house, we can teach them that, um, okay, this is too hard. And then as they get better with it, you can, you know, show them that, okay, that's the pressure line that you can't cross. Socialization. This is a really important part to do for your puppy. Um, you, we want them to grow up to be good adult dogs that learn that new things are okay. So basically we want to, uh, socialization is the process of positively introducing your puppy to all sorts of things, places, people, animals, sounds, objects, obstacles. Um, and we want to do this in a manner that is tailored to their needs so that they learn to easily accept new experiences. Um, we want our puppies to have new experiences, positive experiences every day. You don't want to overwhelm your puppy with too many things, um, but we want to introduce them to as many new things, new people, new objects, new places, sounds. Um, and so I will bring this puppy passport um, that will have a list of things that you can, um, just kind of ideas of how to, uh, things that your puppy should be introduced to. Um, you don't have to get everything, but as long as you have a uh, consistently like new things every day and introducing them positively, which basically means introducing food at the same, really good food at the same time that they're experiencing the new thing, um, they will learn to be great adult dogs and enjoy new experiences. So basically you're going to look at seeing if your puppy loves the new thing, is just okay about it, or if he hates it. And this is one thing um, your guide can help you with because as you can see here, it will have a um, guide for what their body language looks like when they love it, when they are just okay, and when they hate it. So um, you will have an easy reference to see, okay, does my dog really like this or does he not? And if he doesn't like it, then we can um, train him to like that thing instead. Um, so basically you can see in the top right, that puppy loves it, He's, his body is loose, um, his tail's probably wagging um, swiftly, and he is has an open, um, happy mouth, he's ready to play with the little boy. Um, and then in the bottom one, you can see that dog hates it, he's barking at it, going towards it, trying to bite it, does not like that toy that that kid's playing with. Um, and so that's one thing that we could then show him the toy, give him a treat, and do things like that to get him to like the toy and not want to attack it. Um, and then the puppy in the top left is just okay. He's a little nervous. His head's tucked, tail's tucked, ears are down. Um, he's kind of sniffing towards the kid but not approaching him. Um, and so that's when we know he's just kind of uncomfortable. Um, and so we can get them more comfortable with that situation. All right, house training. Um, so I have sent you several documents. Uh, one of them is house training and it will have all a uh, lot more details in it that you can go over. Um, but the main things that it talks about is long-term confinement, short-term confinement, and potty training, which are all important, of course, right now. So long-term confinement, this is a place where your puppy can stay when you cannot provide 100% supervision. Um, complete freedom in the house sets them up for failure because they just roam around and then um, and then if they need to go potty they'll just kind of go because they need to go and then that reinforces they feel better and so they're like okay I can just go wherever um, so we want to confine them in an area where they can't get into trouble also they can't get stuff to chew on that they're not supposed to um, so giving them a safe confined space where they get good things they get their meals um, they get a favorite toy in there and it makes them enjoy that space as well and being and learning that being alone is okay um, and so you want this space to be either a puppy playpen or like a smaller room like the laundry room or um, the bathroom a place that's easy to clean just in case they do have an accident um, and this is a place where you can leave them um, has their bed and some toys um, they might have their kennel with their bed in it um, but also some space they kind of move around as well short-term confinement would be just their crate um, so the crate we want it to be a safe space for the puppy. Um, it's where they can rest, relax, they can get away if something's overwhelming them. Um, we don't wanna rush them into the crate. We want to leave them in there with food um, and show them that it's a good place to be um, and slowly work up to them being, leaving, work up to them being okay with being left there alone. Um, and 
we'll go over more of that as we do training. Um, but all those details are also in the document that I sent. So potty training. It's up to us, of course, to teach our dog to distinguish between indoor and outdoor, um, which basically means where the toilet is and where it is not. Um, so you want to decide where your dog's bathroom will be um, and then reward them with praise and treats right after they go potty in that spot. Um, so uh, you basically want to take, keep them on a schedule, feeding them at certain times, and then usually about 30 minutes after they eat, they'll need to go potty. After they wake up from a nap or after they play really hard, they'll also need to go potty at those times. So taking them outside to that specific corner of the yard, waiting for them to do their business, rewarding them right there. Don't wait till you get inside, take the treats out with you, reward them with praise, give a treat, and then they get to run around and play um, in the yard afterwards as a reward um, if they go potty there. And then if they do go inside, don't scold them or rub their nose in it or anything like that. It doesn't teach them anything. We just want to clean it up really well. Um, you can use something like Nature's Miracle, which is a really good cleaner. That's on my website under the recommended products um, where you can purchase it straight off Amazon, but it's also found in lots of pet stores um, and other stores like Walmart and stuff. Um, and it, we want to clean it really well so their scent is not left behind. Um, and because if they smell their scent, then they'll often pee there just because they smelled it. Um, but basically just ignoring it. If you see them about to go potty, just grab them really fast and take them outside um, and then reinforce them with treats and praise for going outside. But basically, if they've already gone inside, we can't really do anything about it except for clean it and monitor them a little bit better the next time. All right, chew training. So of course, Puppies explore the world with their mouths. Um, so the best approach is to give our puppy legal outlets for chewing. Um, and we want them to learn what is allowed to be chewed and what is not allowed to be chewed. Um, when they have something they should not have, we want to um, interrupt them. You can say a firm word, but um, like no or stop, but it doesn't really matter. Um, basically just taking that object they can't have and then giving them something in exchange for it. Um, if you always take stuff from them, then they'll learn to guard their things instead of um, learning that, okay, when people come up to me, I get good stuff and, and I don't just always get stuff taken from me. So take that object they can't have, give them a toy that they can have or a bone or a treat or something else um, that rewards them for releasing that object and giving it to you. Um, it does not reward them for chewing on that object. Um, so if they have a shoe they're not supposed to have, which I would not let them chew on any shoes because they don't know an old shoe that you can chew on from a new shoe that you can't. Um, so if you don't want them chewing on shoes, don't allow them to chew on any shoes or socks or anything like that that they are not supposed to. Um, so take the shoe, give them a toy um, and praise them for chewing on the toy that they're supposed to chew on. So some basic needs, of course, your puppy needs exercise. Uh, physical exercise is really important. Um, our dogs are designed to expend enormous amounts of energy on survival. And though they have been domesticated, they still have quite a bit of energy that needs to go somewhere. Um, so often that can get them into trouble. So brainstorm different ideas that can help your dog get some exercise, like playing with them, um, you know, tossing a ball or running around with them. Um, also, Right now, when they're really little, they can't do super long walks because their bones are still growing. That could hurt them. Um, so do things more like just kind of letting them um, wander around the front yard and sniff things while they're on the leash um, and just kind of sniffing and strolling along instead of a full walk. Because um, that kind of gets their brain going of just sniffing all the pea mail, as we call it, um, of all the other things that have come by the yard. Um, so a really big thing right now, while your puppy can't walk for long distances, is mental stimulation. Um, so giving them ways to get their brain working, um, because if you had like a kid that was just lying around the house all day, they'd get bored and, um, and if they had nothing to do. So we want to give our puppy something to do and keep them occupied. Well, a great way to do that is get them to work for their food. So you can do something like in the bottom left, this picture is of the magic mushroom, which is a, a toy you can put their food in for the day. So instead of feeding them in just a regular food bowl, oh, you can, um, it kind of twists open, you put the food in, twist it closed, and they tip it around, and there's little holes for the food to fall out, um, and they get the food out. 
um, or the other pictures of a Kong, which you can stuff with food. Um, you could stuff with their regular food and then cover it with like peanut butter to kind of keep the keep a little bit of, of it in. Um, that's a great one to start them on because it's really easy to get the food out as they figure out, oh, okay, I have to tip it around to get the food to fall out. Uh, you can also stuff a food, uh, a Kong with um, like wet dog food um, or peanut butter and then freeze it um, and then give that to them to work on if you're gone for several hours. Um, and that's a yummy popsicle for them to work on. Um, it keeps their focus for a while. So those are great ways to keep your dog um, stimulated with, through their mind. Say please, this is a really important thing we're going to implement right away. So just like we teach kids to say please and ask for things politely, we want our dogs to do that too. So there is a say please list in, your, in one of the handouts I sent. Um, and you can write down all the things that your puppy likes to do um, and just kind of think about, okay, they like to go outside. So in order to ask to go outside, they need to sit, uh, be calm. Um, if some dogs are super excited in a moment of wanting to go outside, um, you could just have them, as long as they're calm, have all four feet on the floor, they get to go outside. As we work on them being able to sit for things, um, and they learn that more specific behavior, then we can wait for them to sit and then they get stuff. So before you feed them, waiting for them to be calm, then they get their food. Or while you're playing with them, randomly waiting for them to calm down, then tossing the toy again. Um, before they get a treat, waiting to be calm, then they get the treat. Um, all sorts of things like that. Because if they're crazy and jumping and barking and excited and they get attention or they do all the crazy stuff and they get to go outside, um, the door opens, then they learn, I need to be crazy in order to get things. So we want them to learn to be calm and polite in order to get stuff instead. All right, so your first class, or if you're doing a group class, or if we're doing a private training session where I come over to your house. Um, so all of these things are for if you're doing a group class that's written on, on this slide. Um, and you wanna have um, your puppy's favorite foods, um, you want them to be hungry. Um, also, when I um, come over to your house, you also want some really good treats that are small, like the size of a pea. Um, usually, if they're chewy, it's better than crunchy. Um, you also want them to be hungry so, um, so that they'll want to work for food. Um, we want them to be able to focus um, on us despite all the fun distractions. Um, so in a class setting, um, we will, um, you'll want to have really good treats for them. Um, to want to work for those things. Um, and then when you arrive, I will escort you to your seat um, and you have your treats ready. Um, you could begin giving your treats to the puppy for being calm on the mat. Um, and we wanna keep them on a leash that's short so they can't just roam and meet other puppies. We'll have playtime later. Um, if, I come in, if I'm coming over to your house for training, um, if you have any other dogs, put them away in another room. Um, with something for them to do, like a fun bone or chew or something, um, so that they can be occupied with that while we focus on the puppy. Um, and then um, I will bring the clicker and provide the clicker as well. So um, that is everything about puppies, and I hope that you have some fun clicking and practicing your clicker. While, right now, if you want to practice with the click some, um, try and do that not around your puppy so they don't start to hear the sound but not get any rewards for it. Um, but as soon as I come over, we will start working on that. And if you have any questions, give me a call or email me. Hope you have a great day.